You're watching a global celebration of all things Notre Dame, where we invite you to watch, connect, give, and vote. This is Notre Dame Day, live from the LaFortune Student Center. Welcome back to Notre Dame Day. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome to our number 20 of Notre Dame Day. It's a 29-hour global celebration of the University of Notre Dame. Are we having fun yet? We are having fun. <laughs> if you are back for our 20th hour, we thank you and we promise you that this hour's broadcast will not disappoint. My name is Trisha Sloma. Some may know me as the early morning show host at WNDU-TV, the local NBC affiliate. I'm here at the beautiful La Fortune Center at the Notre Dame campus, just a few yards away, of course, from the university's main building and the iconic Golden Dome. This will be our broadcast headquarters for the next 10 hours as we celebrate all things Notre Dame with alumni, students, parents, friends, and of course fans all around the world. And I'm joined here in our studio by my co-host for this hour, Emily Pritchard, an anchor with ABC 57 here in South Bend. Thanks, Trisha. Yeah, it's great to be here this afternoon. Now, this hour, we'll be bringing you a wide variety of on-campus events and inspiring stories, of course, all about the good work of Notre Dame students, faculty, and alumni, people working in every corner of the university and in nearly every corner of the world. Coming up, we'll be going live to Notre Dame's Stinson Remick Hall to visit one of our premier engineering research laboratories. We'll also go live to Whitefield where Professor Tracy Kujakowski Cora, she will be showing us the prototype house that her students are building for their project in a Haiti, a very exciting and of course inspiring project as well in two rival residence halls, Pangborn and Ryan Halls will engage in a little friendly, I think friendly is the right word, competition <laughs> this hour on campus and online. And of course, we, it is now time to check in with one of our Notre Dame Day reporters, Claire Rembecki. It looks like you're in a pretty interesting place right now. Where are you and uh, what's going on out there, Claire? Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Trisha. We are here live in Stinson Remick Hall. We're standing in front of a clean lab. It's right behind us. I'm joined here by Triple Domer and, um, well, former Notre Dame Triple Domer, Dr. Um, sorry about that, Dr. David Balkin, who is the f our managing director of the Notre Dame ND Nano, which is Notre Dame Science and Technology Nano Center. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Balkin. Happy to have you here. Dr. Balkin, can you tell us what um. What do we have to have a clean lab when we're doing nanotechnology work? So uh, nanoscience and technology is really about the study of materials at the atomic and molecular level. And consequently, in order to be able to ensure that everything we do is, is clean from uh, the perspective of having dust or pollutants, you have to have an environment that's dust free. Um, what we have here is really a 9,000 square foot facility that ranges from a class 100 to a class 10,000 clean room. Uh, class 100 means that in a cubic foot, there's 100 particles that are 5.5 microns or smaller. And uh, consequently, uh, give you an idea and appreciation for what that means, typically outdoors you have about 35 million particles that are 0.5 microns or larger in, in a cubic foot. So this is a significantly cleaner environment that allows you to really focus on the atomic and molecular level structures properly. What do you perceive to be Notre Dame's role in nanoscience and technology? Actually, we're, we're an industry leader. Um, from a research perspective, our uh, faculty are world-renowned. Uh, Professor Alan Seaball, um, in the past year, has led a team of collaborators uh, with the LEAST program that's recognized for basically identifying novel uh, field effect transistors for the semiconductor industry, which uh, really are going to extend Moore's Law for probably 10 years. Um, the applications that we have rec actually range uh, Broadly, we've got seven dis different disciplines represented uh, from the College of Science and the College of Engineering. The clean room focuses on hard materials, basically double E and physics people, but we also have great facilities over in the multidisciplinary lab that mechanical and aerospace work in. Um, we step in chemistry hall, Newland Science. We just have an amazing set of facilities here. And what do you, or what are some projects that ND Nano is currently working on? Well, I mentioned Dr. Seba uh, working on the. Uh, uh, tunneling field effect transistors, but also we've got uh, Professor Chia Chang who's done a handheld laboratory that allows you to detect pathogens in soil and water. Uh, we also have um, Professor uh, Bashar Beljakar who's working in targeted drug delivery for chemotherapy. Um, 
really the, the range of opportunities that we're focused on is just phenomenally broad. Again, we've got about 60 faculty affiliated with the center, and uh, you know we're doing a lot with the government, with corporations, um, with other other uh, collaborating partners in in uh, academia. Uh, I'd say we're probably associated with universities on every continent except for possibly Antarctica. Wow, truly fascinating work, Doctor. Thank you for joining us for Notre Dame Day. Um, we'll send it back right now to Trisha and Emily in the studio. All right, thank you so much, Claire. I am now joined in the studio by Dr. Don Howard. He happens to be the director of the John J. Riley Center. Good afternoon, Don. Good afternoon. We welcome you to this wonderful Notre Dame Day. I hope that you can share with everyone what exactly is the Riley Center. So the Riley Center for Science, Technology, and Values is, as we like to say, the place where science technology and society meet on the Notre Dame campus. We've got four educational programs, a wide array of research and outreach initiatives, over 60 faculty fe fellows, and most importantly, nearly 200 students who are enrolled in our educational That's programs. That's exciting to hear. 200 is, students yes. are a part of the center. That's Why correct. is it so important to have the Riley Center right here at Notre Dame? So part of the distinctive mission of Notre Dame is to emphasize the value dimension of all aspects of human experience. And that would include science and engineering, which are an ever more important part of the mix here at Notre Dame. The Notre Dame style is to do science and engineering at the highest technical levels, but at the same time to bear in mind the human impact of science and technology. And our mission in the Riley Center is to address exactly that problem. What are the ethics issues? What are the legal issues? What are the societal impact issues of science and technology? Well, what I think is beautiful is that you're taking science and engineering and marrying the subject because, as we all know, there's the science snobs and there That's are right. the engineering snobs. Right. This puts the two thought processes together and handles the ethics behind it all. That's right, it brings the humanists into the mix as well. And we often complain about how many universities have, are built around silos, right? There's right. this discipline and that discipline, and rarely do they get together and interact in productive ways. And again, part of our mission is to be the place where all of this uh, comes together. But again, ultimately, and most importantly, for the benefit of the students who are in our program. Well, it is a win situation for those students because you take a problem and you solve it and it's almost like a PR job in a way because you're helping to make it right for the kids to learn in the right way and to also help sell that message. If you could explain maybe one of the challenges that you've had to uh, encounter and how you were able to resolve it for the students. Well, so here's an issue. We have a responsibility for what's called the Riley Arts and Letters Engineering five-year dual degree program, sure. which is a really important program. It's one of a kind. Highly you respected. Can't, very highly respected. You can't find another one like it anywhere in the world. One of the issues that we had to confront a few years ago was retooling that program so as to make it even more comfortable, especially for women who are majoring in engin uh, engineering. As you know, this is a challenge across sure. the academy, but we're really proud of some of the ideas that we had for recognizing how their experience of an engineering education is a little bit different and how we could respond to it structurally and programmatically. And those numbers are up now very significantly. Well, and I'm glad you touched on the fact that women in science and engineering, Notre Dame has done a wonderful job, an aggressive job at recruiting right. fine right. female scientists and engineers That's right. from around the country. That's right. Can I tell you some stories about oh, some of them we see in the program? Please do. Right. So here's one of the favorite ones I love about the students in this dual degree program. We interviewed a couple of years ago. We, every year we give out a big sure. prize at the end of the year. We interview students. One of the women we interviewed uh, came into this program with a major in mechanical engineering on the engineering side and cognitive psychology on the arts and letters side. And I was saying to myself, how on earth do you put these two things to, uh, together? <laughs> Sounds like a light load, right? <laughs> uh, well, it's, no, it's a very, very heavy load. But exactly. what I also learned is that she was on our equestrian team and her life's ambition was to design the safest sports helmet the world had ever seen. Wow. And what two disciplines do you need to do that but mechanical engineering and cognitive psychology? 
Happily, we've got a program here where you can put those things together. This young woman left this campus with a handful of patents already in hand. Thank She's God. already launched into just a spectacular career. And again, it's our ability at Notre Dame, our distinctive ability to create these kinds of interdisciplinary spaces that help make it possible for us, us to launch really brilliant young people like that on such productive careers. When you have these bright young minds coming in and to help them send them on the way in the right fashion, and achieve all the goals that they set out to do, that can only make you feel incredible. Well, it does. It makes me feel like a proud parent almost every I bet. day. Yes, I bet. Yes, well, yes. congratulations on the success of the Riley Center, and thank you so much for sharing more of the thoughts today. Well, thank you very much. Happy to be here. All right. Okay. Well, now right. we send it back to Emily at the desk for more on Notre Dame Day. Thank you, Tricia. Well, as we've shared with you, Notre Dame Day is a global celebration. As we speak with groups, they are gathering all over the world to celebrate Notre Dame. It's now our pleasure to leave the campus here on Notre Dame's campus and check in on some members of the Notre Dame family in the United Kingdom who are leading a Notre Dame Day celebration of their own all the way in London. Can you guys hear me over there? Yes. Uh, wonderful. Hi. Welcome to the show this afternoon. Where are you guys uh, celebrating Notre Dame Day from? Um, we're celebrating today in London, um, well, in the Global Gateway, which is just off um, Trafalgar Square. Wonderful. And who are you all with there this afternoon? Um, today we've got, uh, well, I'm Emily, I'm Communications and Planning Specialist for the London Global Gateway. We're with Warren von Eschenbach, the Director of the Global Gateway. And um, we've got Scott Mainwaring um, of the Kellogg Institute and Nicole Skanger, who's um, a student here. And if you could tell us, what time is it over there for you guys? We have a little bit of a time difference, I'm guessing, going on. 10 after 7. It's a little later for you guys. So you guys have probably been celebrating Notre Dame Day since earlier this morning. If you could tell the Notre Dame family one thing they should know about the Notre Dame Global Gateway Movement in London, what would it be? Um, I think a good start would be to explain a little bit what we mean by a Global Gateway. And it's uh, essentially our vision for what we hope to accomplish with all of our study abroad centers, which is to create a venue for intellectual and cultural exchange so we can bring a little bit of Notre Dame to the world and the world to Notre Dame. And in so doing, uh, really enhance the international experience of our students and, and extend the global reach of our faculty scholarship and research. And what's it like being able to represent the university from so far away across an ocean, in fact? It's, it's thrilling. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and a challenge. Uh, the challenge really is I think to increase our recognition. I mean, we're not as well known in the UK, certainly, um, but that's that's a fun challenge to have, and it's uh, it's an honor to to represent Notre Dame over here and, and get to work with faculty members like Scott and have students like Nicole come through each semester. And I'm guessing a lot of people you run into maybe have never been to Indiana, South Bend, been on the campus of Notre Dame. What would you tell them maybe is most unique about being on campus here? Um, well, I think in some respects, it's trying to make the similarities to where they may be familiar with places like Oxford and Cambridge, which have a strong residential collegiate uh, identity. And that's similar. That's one similarity with Notre Dame. And then just talking about uh, our unique mission as a, a Catholic research university and what that means in trying to combine high level research scholarship and teaching with a broader mission, Catholic mission. And then finally for me, what is it like being an ambassador all the way over in London for the University of Notre Dame? Well, that's a simple question to answer. It's great. It's a lot of fun. I should maybe explain what the question means, though. Um, I was asked this year to try to help some with outreach to, um, to other universities, to colleagues here in London. And so we organized an event to celebrate 30 years of democracy in Argentina, another event on democracy in Brazil. I formed a working group with colleagues from the London School of Economics and King's College. And I've interfaced a lot in different ways with colleagues from not only different parts of the United Kingdom, but also different places in Europe. And best, I've gotten to teach Nicole <laughs> and a few other great students this year. That's been a lot of fun, too. Sounds like you guys have a lot of work you're doing over there. Well, thank you so much for joining us all the way from London. Hope you have a great time celebrating Notre Dame Day. And Tricia, we're heading back over to you. 
All right, thank you so much, Emily. I am here now with South Bend native and Notre Dame parent, Bob Wozni. Bob, welcome to Notre Dame Day. Thank you, Tricia. You must be thrilled with what we're doing here today. I am, I think it's a great step for the university, something different uh, you know, to gain the exposure and, and, and get more people engaged. Sure, now what sticks out from your childhood about growing up here in South Bend under the shadow of the Golden Dome? Unequivocally, it was a lot easier getting football tickets yeah, when I was a kid. I can only so, I mean, imagine. That, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, um, the thing that I think strikes me is the impact that the university had, uh, in, uh, at the time I didn't realize it, but had on the community, both spiritually and economically. Oh, yeah. That, um, you know, because of the footprint of the Order of the Holy Cross with Notre Dame, it reached out into the community and started a number of parishes. And I grew up in the west side of South Bend, uh, St. Stanislaus Parish. and. Uh -huh. and uh, became uh, involved with the university through the priest from uh, from Notre Dame that would come to our church uh, for mass. You, you almost take it for granted looking back. Do you think as a child, in a way, you just grew up in this rich Notre Dame tradition? Well, I think being a, a Catholic, in, in my case, yeah. going to a Catholic grade school and the, and the, the uh, con connection between the school and the church sure. in Notre Dame through the Order of the Holy Cross made it special. And, sure. You know, I thought college life was great. I was coming here when I was 12 years old, going to the Rock, working out, going to South Dining Hall, eating. I said, I can't wait till I get to college. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to come to Notre Dame, but uh, uh, it, it was a great experience growing up and being around the school. You touched on the fact that you didn't get to go to Notre Dame, but your son. My son did. What was that like when he received his letter of acceptance? Well, you know, uh, I was the first one in my family that went to college. Sure. So it was special for me that my son then gets uh, accepted to Notre Dame. And I probably speak for all parents that we're probably more excited than children are. Um, <laughs> and it's probably a toss up in a lot of cases, but clearly in mine, I was, uh, uh, you know, pulled me off the ceiling when, when he got his acceptance letter. So, What does it mean to you to be a member of the Notre Dame family now? You know, I think that's one of the things, um, and I've mentioned this to a number of people that I think separates the university from other schools, is that when they say it's a 40 year relationship between student uh, in the school. It's really that plus with parents because it's one of the few schools I think that really keep the parents engaged while the students on campus but then continues to do that th uh, throughout the you know the, the life of the parents and, and the students as well so I think it's really something special here. How do you stay engaged with the university? I mean there's all sorts of events you can go to but I know you take it to a different level. Well, my situation is a little unique in the sense that I had a business in South Bend, so I, I uh, became involved in a number of charitable organizations. And ironically enough, the school is also involved in them, such as uh, Women's Care Center, Logan, and the Center for the Homeless. So I happen to be a charter member of the President's Circle here. But it was through my involvement with the Center for the Homeless that, that I became a member of the charter, uh, uh, charter member of the President's Circle. because. At the time, uh, Lou Nani was the executive director sure. of the Center for the Homeless, and Bill Sexton ultimately re, uh, retired. Lou comes to Notre Dame. You know, Lou, he can't sell anything to anybody, but he sure could sell me on the president's <laughs> circle, so it was just an easy sell for him. Oh, I bet so. Well, I, congratulations again to you and your family, and what a wonderful, enriching experience, not only just to be a part of the Notre Dame tradition, but with your faith as well. I know well, that's incredibly special to you as well, so thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we wish you the absolute best in the future. Oh, great. We'll see All right. You. Well, now we need to send it out to Mark. He has moved on to on this Notre Dame Day. Mark Lamont, where are you exactly, and what are you up to? Trisha, I'm out here in Whitefield. Trisha, I'm out here in Whitefield. I've got with me engineering professor Dr. Tracy Kajuski Korea and some of her students. Dr. Ko Kajuski, welcome to Notre Dame Day. Would you tell us, what is Engineering to Empower? Engineering to Empower, or E2E, is a group of faculty and students in the College of Engineering who, along with our committed partners, believe that every family has the right to a safe, affordable, and dignified home. Wonderful. So why has it been so challenging for the ho housing sector in Haiti to recover after the earthquake? Well, in Haiti, you have a lack of the many of the basic underpinnings that we take for granted here in the United States. Mortgages, insurance, inspections and building codes, and trained professionals to construct homes. So in Haiti, after the earthquake, transitory shelters were given out and then families were left to their own to reconstruct in a climate where they don't have the economic resources to do so safely. And unfortunately, their only mode of construction, masonry, has proven far too expensive to reconstruct and make safe in earthquakes. 
And how is the Engineering to Empower approach uh, aiding this recovery? So Engineering to Empower has a motto. It's listen, innovate, and empower. In the listening stage, we take careful account of all the factors that influence the reason why the Haitians have not been able to safely construct their homes for earthquakes and reconstruct for over four years now. Looking at all those constraints and challenges, we then do what universities do best. We innovate. We find a way to completely change the way a house is configured in such a manner that it navigates those constraints. And then finally, we empower the Haitians to take ownership of that process so they can open their own businesses to fabricate, construct, and erect these homes and basically liberate themselves from a cycle of aid that would keep them trapped in shelters for an indefinite period. Great. So. Uh, will you show us some of the unique features here real yeah. quick? So we're actually looking at our E2E prototype home that just came out of formwork this morning. Now, if you were looking at masonry construction in Haiti, all of these walls would be solid masonry block and would have to be fortified with steel. To fortify it with enough steel to withstand an earthquake of a magnitude 7 or higher, we're talking about dramatically increasing, doubling if not tripling the cost of the home. Haitians just can't afford that. So what we've done is redesigned the home to concentrate all of the strength, the steel, in these discrete members, much like your human body, a skeleton or a frame. Once this frame is constructed and made earthquake resilient through the design that we fabricated and standardized for the E2E home, we then can clad it with lightweight panels, much like your skin, to safely enclose it. In this manner, you have a safe and affordable home that you actually can occupy as you're progressively adding the walls to it and finishing out. Keep in mind, they don't have mortgages or insurance, so they build their house piece by piece. With this frame erect, they can slowly add walls and clad it out and have their family living in one room, expand to two rooms, add on a third room, and so on. So the family can grow with their home over time as their resources allow. Great. That was fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us on Notre Dame Day this year. Thanks. Back to you in the studio, Tricia. All right, thanks so much, Mark. And I am very pleased to welcome now Dr. David Severson of the Eck Institute of Global Health. Dave, thank you so much for being here. You are the director. This is your chance to be the cheerleader and support system and tell everyone out there watching Notre Dame Day what exactly the Institute does. So thank you so much, Tricia. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the Eck Institute for Global Health is uh, has, has really developed from a long history of faculty engaged in research on, primarily on tropical infectious diseases. We go way back to the, the late 1950s. Uh, it was started by uh, Dr. George Craig, was an eminent medical entomologist who started a lot of the work on, on mosquitoes and mosquito-borne diseases. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, Paul Weinstein came in, who was a parasitologist, and we built a, a core of faculty who were engaged in these tropical infectious diseases. And in the late 1990s, a group of us came in to continue that legacy. Uh, we organized a center for tropical infectious disease research. And then in uh, 2010, or 2008 to begin with, as part of the Provo Strategic Research Initiative, we got some funding to get going as a group, and then we received a generous endowment from the F Frank X Sr. and the family committed to that, and so we've been able to build the institute around that. So we, we presently have upwards of 80 faculty involved with the institute. Uh, we're still largely engaged in research on tropical infectious diseases. Uh, our mission is really looking at, you know, what can we as Notre Dame faculty do to make a difference in these developing countries where these diseases largely impact poor people. Certainly you saw a need and you, your research is directed exactly to, to focus exactly on what is needed there. Mm -hmm. Dave, I remember 20 some years ago doing a story when this was first being thought of and, and in the first beginnings of this research. Tell me where you are now with this and what ground has been gained? Mm -hmm. So there have been a, a lot of a lot of uh, successes made in, in some of these diseases. So there, there's a whole... Uh, now there's a long list of diseases, long, and there's also diseases that have a lot of letters in them, too. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so there, so we, have, we have faculty who are actively engaged in malaria research, mm -hmm. uh, vir virus research, largely dengue virus, mm -hmm. things like leishmania that's hard to say. Yes. Uh, we have th that's the one I was thinking yes, of. Yes. <laughs> uh, people who work on tuberculosis, uh, bacterial diseases, uh, some of the things that you're more familiar with. 
uh, staph infection, pseudomonas, things like this that may be uh, uh, hospital acquired. Um, but a, a large part of the success has been relating to uh, some of the mosquito-borne diseases. We have faculty or act faculty are actively engaged with large gate uh, uh, foundation funded projects looking at, at ways to intervene with the mosquito and prevent mosquitoes from transmitting uh, parasites like, like uh, malaria to humans or viruses like dengue to humans. So there have been some successes in that largely in terms of bringing down the death rate the uh, death rate due Absolutely. to malaria has, has really plummeted over the past 10 years, largely with a lot of the insecticide-treated bed net use and, and things like that, uh, uh, removing breeding sites, and, and, and a number of our faculty have played major roles in, in driving that. Well, here's what I don't, I don't think people can really appreciate unless you tell them mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what conditions are people researching in. We're not just talking laboratory. This isn't a sterile environment. You guys right. actually put your boots on the ground and you're in these areas right, researching. Right, exactly. You have to not only encounter incredibly difficult environmental challenges, but also the political environment mm -hmm. and the cultural environment mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. How well received is Notre Dame in these areas? So so I can say that that of all the all the field work that I've ever done, and I'm right. sure I can speak for everybody else, sure. that when you go into these sites, they're very warm and, right. and inviting, that they're just happy to have people come in and, and I actually love it. They're Good. it's great to interact with people. You know, I I'm uh, you know, I, I'm a, uh, a mosquito biologist myself. Well, so. and Dave, tell everyone what your research yes. is. It's a little bit different than some of the ones that we've been talking so, about. So I've worked on a number of, of mosquito-borne diseases and with a number of mosquitoes over the, the last two or three decades, uh, but primarily involved with dengue virus transmission. Uh, and so I've had a long-standing research, research program in places like Trinidad and Tobago and the Southern Caribbean, so it's a great place to do work. <laughs> I was going to say, great you don't people. mind going, huh? <laughs> I've got a small project funded uh, on the, the mosquito that transmits dengue in, uh, with collaborators in Cuba, of all places. Um, and I've had a small project funded with a collaborator in Pune University in Western India looking at, you know, you've heard all this press in, in the literature and then the media about humans and the sure. microbiome and all of this stuff. We are our bacteria, we are what our bacteria are, but we're doing that same thing with mosquitoes of asking questions about what kind of mosquito, what kind of bacteria are associated with the mosquitoes and does it have an impact on their life history traits and including, uh, uh, dengue virus transmission, things like that. So, you know, I typically go into a field site and a field site would be somebody's yard. I can't imagine in the US, <laughs> we would go in and say, hi, I'm, I'm studying mosquitoes. Can I come in and pick around your, your yard and your house? And they've always invited me in to look for containers uh, around the yard and also in their house. They'll invite you into their house. I, you know, sweep net in people's bedrooms and in their closets. and. And they, it, this just wouldn't happen anywhere else. So I've always had a, a, an incredible time. And it's the other really, really nice part is that usually children come out oh. to see what you're doing. So I've had some really great interactions with what kids. What a unique perspective yes, you're able to share so and, and experience. It's really wonderful. It's really oh, wonderful well, to get Dave, out with the people. Thank you. So. And, and good luck to you and continued success to you and all that you're doing with your research and also with the Institute. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of your Notre Dame day, okay? All right, thanks. All right. And now we need to send it out to Jonathan. He's out at the Student Center. What are you up to, Jonathan? Hi, Tricia. Thanks very much. We're here in the social media lounge as part of Notre Dame Day. We want to thank all of you who are watching us right now from around the globe, countries like India, China, uh, Ireland, the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for being a part of Notre Dame Day. Thanks to everyone who has gone online. Uh, and given cast their votes for the areas of the Notre Dame experience uh, that mean the most to them. It's been a, a, a great ride being with you here. We have nine hours left to go, and I know that so many of you are, are going to stick with us, and we really appreciate that. Uh, I have Lyndall with me. Lyndall, you want to give people a little run-through on how they can participate in Notre Dame Day? Sure, absolutely. NotreDameDay.nd.edu is where everything is happening. You can go online, you can view our broadcast schedule, see what's coming up, see when you want to tune in. You can take a look at our leaderboard and our residence hall challenges. And most importantly, you can give and you can vote. Go to the big green button right there. You can't miss it on the front page there. You have nine hours left. 
um, make your donation, and we have more than 350 areas across the university where you can give your three votes to. So um, log on, see, see what matters most to you, and, and give back to our students and the programs that mean so much to them. Awesome, Lyndall. Big shout out to everybody on campus as well. The coffee bar, latte bar, is reopening in a matter of minutes. So come on down. You can sit down at the thank you booth. We've had about 40 people sit down and, and send thank you messages out. We're going to put them up on social media. Uh, and, you know, I got to say, it seemed like it was pretty lopsided last hour. It looked like Keenan was going to, you know, have a pretty, uh, a pretty handy win. How did that do, Sarah? Well, this is the story of the hour. There was a huge upset. Keenan versus Stanford. Keenan was up by 13, but Stanford with the win by 37 votes. So way to rally Stanford. And now, if you look at the totals, they're number two overall with the votes. So that is huge. They shot way up. Currently, uh, we have Ryan versus Pangborn, and they're tied. So let's take a look at the leaderboard. Here we've got the overall financial aid still at the top, and then big Stanford. And another story, a law school coming in in the top 10. Want to talk a little bit about this column. Well, let, let's talk about all three columns. First, the votes. Second, the percentage of total votes. Third, the dollars. So these are the number of the votes. This corresponds with the percentage, and then the money corresponds to that. So this is the complete 250 all broken out, but this can change. So right now, financial aid is at the top. This is their dollar amount, but depending on how the votes go and how the rest of the day shakes out, who knows, maybe in the next hour, Stanford will be way at the top. And coming up, we have Lou Nani, my boss, the vice president <laughs> for <laughs> university relations. Then we have Dean Nell Newton from the law school, then taking it to Chicago for ND Law, Kevin Dolan, from the EMBA program, and then it's Nat Hall versus Siegfried. And I think now we're back to Trisha on the couch. All right, thank you so much. Hey, it's time now for a game. I think we're ready for one. Heads up, it's a game you've seen on Ellen DeGeneres. And joining me now, Maggie and Sarah. Ladies, introduce yourselves to all of Notre Dame fans watching across the world today. Go ahead. I'm Maggie, and I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And what hall are you in? Pangborn Hall. And are you studying hard today? All day. All day, <laughs> except okay. for this. All right, Sarah, your turn. Um, and I'm Sarah Price, and I'm from Joliet, Illinois, and also from Pangborn Hall, proud resident. All right, and studying very hard, obviously. Every That's time. why she's spending time today with me playing a game. <laughs> Ladies, show me what you got. Ready? No, no, flip it. Turn it upside You got to turn. <laughs> this is going quite well, by the way. Oh, the um, athletic director. Oh, oh, Jack Swarbrick. Yes. Good job. Just pass. Oh, come on, you know that one. Uh, okay, right where we were on North Quad, the so dorm. Good. Yeah, the Hardly dorm. BT. Yes, yes, correct. Pass. Oh. oh, we live next to it, right in Pangborn. Fisher. No, no, no. Th yes, correct. Um, right next to the dome where we go to Mass. Basilica of Notre Dame. No. Oh. Well, the lake. Kind of. She of said the, it. The grotto. Yes, correct. Did we say but correct? She said basilica. basilica. Does that count, people? We'll say <laughs> pass. Oh, come on. Pass. Come on. <laughs> oh, where are we are right now? Oh, uh, Lafon. <laughs> where Tony? Where our good friend Tony from? McGlynn. Yes. <laughs> the football coach right now. Oh, uh, come on, <laughs> Brian. Uh, Oh, for heaven's I sakes, know, child. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I can't believe you passed on Ruth Riley and you almost lost the Basilica. My goodness, ladies, thank you so much. I think it's time to bring another group in here and see what we can do. Thank you. Ladies, thank you so much and good luck with the rest of the year. Go study, would you? Will do. All right, try a little harder next time, too. <laughs> Go study up on who Roth Riley is and also Brian Kelly, if you don't mind. Brian that would help. Kelly. Okay, next team. Bring it in, ladies. Let's see what you got. Hi. Hi. I want you to pick up that microphone. Where did it go? Did she take it away already? Oh, here it is. All right. All right, tell me your names. I'm Nicole. Hi, Nicole. And your name? Emily. All right. And tell me where you're from. I'm from Mendham, New Jersey. Oh, excellent. And I live in Ryan Hall here. 
South and Bend. Uh, of course Ryan. you are. Yeah. And uh, tell me what halls you're living in. We both live in Ryan Hall. Okay, well let's get right to the game. Let's go for it. And I can hold the mic room for you, hon. Now I can't see these, so. Okay, uh, on West Quad, not Keo, the other men's hall. O'Neill? Yep. Um, it is on North Quad, Women's Storm, the base. BP. How's she doing, everybody? Um, he, uh, passed. Oh. Is that a good pass or a bad pass, uh, everyone? Come right on. Right next to Pangborn on South Quad. Right um, he was a football coach, uh, <laughs> one of the like all-time great ones. Um, okay, pass. <laughs> uh, pass. You're getting um, some he groans. He is one of the uh, president of Meredith of Notre Dame, lives in Soaring now. Heisberg? No, the, um, oh. uh, pass. Malloy. Oh, yep, there you go. <laughs> uh, pass. Um, it is a dorm uh, right behind the dome, the Lewis? oldest building on campus. Oh, Soaring. Mm. Men's dorm, gentlemen, yeah, dance. There you go. Okay, this is a dorm. They have the day of man. Men's Six dorm, feet. bingo, yeah. Woo. How do they do? <laughs> Who's our winner? Do we know? Yeah. It's our group, first group, Maggie and Sarah? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, and here I was getting on them about Ruth Riley. My goodness. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much. You. We're so glad. Enjoy the rest of Notre Dame Day, okay? Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right, we're having a lot of fun here. Uh, so you know what? We need to send it out now. I believe we have our next uh, reporter who is standing by on the North Quad, Megan Bastido. Megan, how's it going? Good, Trisha. I'm a little disappointed with the lack of athletic knowledge there. So hopefully these two dorms can bounce back here as they have a battle of tug of war on North Quad. We have the girls from Pangborn and the ladies from Ryan. So Pangborn, you ready? Ryan, you ready? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Pangborn making a move. Pangborn wins. The ladies from Pangborn pull it off here. Anna, our captain from Pangborn, you guaranteed the win when I talked to you earlier. How does it feel to actually back that up? We're so proud of our dome. You know, my girls showed up. We've got a lot of love for where we live. We're just blessed to go to such a great, a great school that always has our back. And you know, you, you guys, you were you were a little confused there with the uh, heads up, but your girls came through there. So 2-0 and oh on the day. It's got to be nice to make some money for your dorm. It's really nice. You know, Pangborn's a great facility, but there's always room for improvement. We're looking to, you know, always make our dorm a better place for our girls because we're really proud of where we live. All right, you girls got those chants going on. Go ahead and celebrate. Thank, Thank you. you, Anna. Trisha, we'll head back to you there with the Pangborn win here in the tug of war. Back to you, Trisha. Some strong ladies for sure. Nice job, everyone out on the campus today. Yeah, maybe we'll have to play a little tug of war in here a maybe little bit. So. It's kind of quiet in here compared to out there. <laughs> yeah, they've got like. it going on out there. Yeah, and don't go anywhere. Stick around. We are going to have lots more coverage here from the Fortune on this very special Notre Dame Day.